This module is intended for medical residents, fellows, and attending physicians and surgeons with limited knowledge of bronchoscopy procedures. Learners should be familiar with basic upper and lower airway anatomy, basic principles and pathophysiology of upper and lower airways. This course is designed to provide residents, fellows, and attending physicians and surgeons with an understanding of the indications, contraindications, and risks of bronchoscopy and enable them to inform patients and obtain their consent for the procedure. At the completion of this module, learners should be able to define the common indications and contraindications for bronchoscopy, identify and describe the limitations and risks associated with bronchoscopy procedure and post-procedure, define the critical steps required for informed patient consent. Hi, Mr. Jones. I'm Dr. Henderson. I understand your doctor sent you here for consideration of bronchoscopy? Uh, yes, she did. I have a cough and haven't been feeling well, so she sent me here. Bronchoscopy can be a useful tool for diagnosing and treating airway problems. Common diagnostic indications may vary between standard bronchoscopy and bronchoscopy in an intubated patient. Diagnostic indications for standard bronchoscopy include suspected infection, parenchymal nodules or masses, mediastinal lymphadenopathy or masses, hemoptysis, suspected airway obstruction, persistent atelectasis, abnormal or persistent opacities on chest imaging, suspected lung transplantation rejection, suspected tracheobronchomalacia, suspected tracheoesophageal fistula. Diagnostic indications for bronchoscopy in an intubated patient include suspected ventilator-associated pneumonia, hemoptysis, suspected airway obstruction, persistent atelectasis, smoke inhalation, suspected tracheoesophageal fistula, unexplained pulmonary opacities. In addition, therapeutic indications for bronchoscopy include mucus accumulation unresponsive to bronchopulmonary hygiene, foreign bodies, endotracheal tube management, laser therapy, photodynamic therapy, electrocoagulation, cryotherapy, balloon dilatation, brachytherapy catheters, tracheobronchial stents, bronchial thermoplasty. Keep in mind that there are situations in which rigid bronchoscopy may be advantageous over flexible bronchoscopy. For example, removal of large foreign bodies and management of large obstructing lesions may be facilitated by rigid bronchoscopy. Rigid bronchoscopy is also frequently performed for therapeutic procedures in the pediatric population. Okay, can you tell me a little more about your symptoms? Uh, well, you can tell my voice is cracking. I have a lot of voice fluctuation, coughing for five, ten minutes at a time, and a sore throat. I don't know if that's just from the coughing or from something else. Just as importantly, it's important to know when not to perform a bronchoscopy and to seek other diagnostic options. Contraindications for non-emergent bronchoscopy include recent medical events, ongoing or recent myocardial ischemia, decompensated heart failure, current exacerbation of asthma or COPD, life-threatening arrhythmia within six weeks, severe hypoxemia. Criteria will vary depending on whether patient is intubated or not. Contraindications for non-emergent brushing or biopsy. Antiplatelet agent within five days. Subcutaneous low molecular weight heparin within 12 hours. Platelet count less than or equal to 50,000 per cubic millimeter. INR greater than 1.5. After assessing both the indications and contraindications, if bronchoscopy is indicated as either a diagnostic or therapeutic tool, it is important to accurately inform the patient about the procedure, potential risks and benefits, and obtain informed consent. Excellent. All right, Mr. Jones, so based on our discussion, I think that you would benefit from bronchoscopy. Our goal would be to find out what's going on so that we can uh, treat you properly. Okay, exactly. What is bronchoscopy? Informed consent is the process for obtaining permission before conducting a healthcare intervention. It should include clear description of the intervention protocol, potential risks and benefits, duration, and should always allow opportunities for patient questions. Um, well, Mr. Jones, in your case, I'd recommend flexible fiber optic bronchoscopy. That consists of a long, thin tube with a light at the end. We put it in through your nose or your mouth and we take a look down in your lungs. We do give you numbing medication for your throat and your nose uh, and a little sedation so that you're comfortable through the procedure.
When obtaining patient consent, it is important to explain the details of the procedure at a very basic level, including how long they can expect the procedure to take. So the entire procedure should take about 30 minutes and you can go home right afterwards. You will need someone to drive you home because of the medications that we will have given you to relax you during the procedure. And in fact, you really shouldn't drive for about eight hours after the procedure. A critical component of informed consent is a description of the potential risks. Risk of bronchoscopy include new or worsened hypoxemia, hoarseness or sore throat, transient fever, cough and bronchospasm, infection, bleeding, increased with biopsy, pneumothorax, increased with biopsy, arrhythmia. This discussion can often be a scary moment for patients so it is important to share a complete list of the risks, but in a way that does not alarm the patient. Be sure to include information of what the patient can do if they experience any problems following the procedure, after hours included. Is it safe? Are there complications? It's generally a safe procedure. Complications are rare, but I would like to take a moment to go over the risks with you. Is that okay? Yeah. Risks of the procedure include shortness of breath, fever, infection, bleeding, and very rarely collapsed lung. The commonest things though afterwards are to have sore throat or hoarse voice, and usually that goes away within a day or two. Certainly if you have any problems, you shouldn't hesitate to call us, and even after hours you can reach us and we'll give you reading material with uh, phone numbers at the bottom. Do, does that all make sense so far? Yeah, yeah. Any so. questions about um, any of that? Can I eat? After the procedure? We don't want you to have anything to eat or drink for about two hours after the procedure, but then after that you can eat or drink anything that feels comfortable in your throat. Okay. And I usually exercise in the morning. Can I do that? Should be fine. Anything you feel comfortable doing, you can go ahead and do. The bronchoscopy shouldn't stop you. Okay. Well, thanks very much for coming in, Mr. Jones. It was very nice to meet you. I'll have my patient care coordinator, Thomas, come in to discuss scheduling with you. And okay. if you have any questions between now and then, feel free to call me. Okay. Thank you.